thank you very much for coming everybody and um, you know we I have been here for a couple of days here in Texas my first time in Texas and uh, not the last time so I'll be back for sure I really like the place and of course has been great to be with Eric uh, you know and Angelica and uh, some other friends that are not here they went to Houston to play they will be back tomorrow um, I'm just right back from uh, Nam. It was a great experience. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming to the clinic. I will uh, play a couple of songs and uh, explain uh, something about uh, how do I write music since I am um, I'm a composer. First, uh, compared to guitar player, I play the guitar of course. I'm a guitar player. I studied as a guitar player, but mainly I'm a composer. So. It would be really cool if you guys have any questions because I really like to uh, to you know answer the question to the clinic instead of just starting speaking you know because I could speak for many days without stopping. <laughs> I speak all the time and some of the guys they know what I'm talking about so <laughs> exactly here we go. Uh, yeah, as I said before, I'm a composer. I play music since I was a kid, and I'm um, my main main occupation is a uh, guitar instructor, music teacher. I live in Norway. I'm Italian. That's why I don't look like a Viking. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have I lived in uh, in America for a couple of years in uh, in Los Angeles, playing music with my band, and uh, then I moved back to Europe and I toured a lot in Europe and I started to be a solo artist uh, in around 2008 I wrote my first album and then you know a lot of things started happening I was endorsed I have been endorsed by PV and then I switched to Randall after seven years and then you know I started working with a lot of different companies I'm speaking too much already so I'm gonna play uh, one song this is the first song of my latest solo album which is there I just have one copy so we have some kind of lottery later on and uh, some of you guys can win uh, one CD or uh, some pedals or a guitar pickup since uh, this clinic is in collaboration with Hot Tom, which is a, a, a brand a company I work with, uh, Lundgren Pickups and uh, Altus Guitar. But you're not going to win the guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we not yet. The free ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, and thank you very much to Mark for bringing those awesome guitars today. Uh, we, did, we did a couple of videos yesterday. I mean, not a, just a couple. We did like a lot of videos yesterday. Between like, uh, we've played ten songs, and I have been. We have been recording here for around like eight hours, six hours, right? Which is, uh, which is okay, I mean, 10 songs should take like 3 days, so I think we did a great job yesterday, or at least uh, I hope so, that I did. Uh, okay, but anyway, sorry, I have to start with the first song, the song is called SL8, and it's the first song of my solo album, The Art of Complication.
proud of my album and um, yeah, you know, I composed this album between uh, 2013 and 16, but I never took the time to finish and last year I just decided to just close, lock myself inside the studio and be done with that. And uh, a lot of things happened after I released the album. Uh, composing is uh, my main activity together with, um, with teaching, of course. And uh, since I learned uh, how to play guitar without going to school at the beginning, you know, I, I focused mainly on, uh, on writing music instead of just uh, playing music from other artists. You know, and, I, and that helped me a little bit in developing my style. Uh, for me, composing is the first thing, so uh, I write music and then I have to, to learn how to play at least, you know what I mean. So, um, uh, I always try to, to divide um, music, I mean guitar technique from uh, music composition, because I, I think they are two different things. Sometimes it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's possible to combine those things, but uh, you know, I think music, music comes first and music technique second, which is the, the, the actual trend is not exactly this one. I love them, you know, guitar players, they just focus on being really fast in the, on the guitar, and, uh, but they don't really know, uh, have an idea about what they are playing sometimes, you know. Any questions? Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> so why did you decide it, or like, what does the name of that song like mean? Uh, it, it actually mean nothing, means oh, okay. nothing. Uh, it's a working title and uh, eight. It means it was the I was uh, in that period. I was switching between the seventh string and the eighth string. Oh, okay. And I have been playing seventh string for a really long time since I bought my first uh, eight, the seventh string in two thousand, when uh, a lot of bands from America were starting to be popular, like Fear Factory, Korn, uh, or Steve Vai. I mean, Steve Vai started with the seventh string a long time before. And, uh, you know, it was the first uh, song I composed with the 8th string and the number 8 stands for 8th string, but it's, uh, it's a working title. At the end of the day, it's an instrumental music, so there is no lyrics in, in the song. And I really liked uh, the way this uh, SL8 or Slate was uh, sounding and I just kept uh, the title, yeah, you know, so cool. there is not, not really a deep meaning, <laughs> you know. That's cool. Well, other questions? Yes. For you, what do you, what's the appeal of moving to the eighth string as opposed to your seventh? Sorry. What's the appeal of moving to the eighth string as opposed to just? Uh, as I seven? said before, I played seventh string for a long time, and uh, you know when uh, when I was in Italy and I was playing the seventh string, and then I started the music college. Everybody were like, you know, why the hell do you need the seventh string? You know, mm -hmm. and but uh, you know the music I was listening to, it was. Uh, um, and the still, what I what I play nowadays is a combination between uh, extreme metal and uh, instrumental music, like Steve Vai, Joseph Young, and those guys. And I needed to have an instrument which was combining those two things because everybody else were, and also in America in that period, everybody else were just tuning their guitar down, like uh, to D in the eighties uh, or the nineties, and then to C like uh, in Flames or and. Uh, and even like down to A, you know, like drop A. And for me, it was impossible to play those solos and to band and, you know, to have a good banding and a good feedback from the guitar and to be able to play those solos like I was used to when I was still playing stuff like Metallica or whatever. And uh, so I needed to have an instrument which was combining uh, those lower tuning with uh, um, a standard, uh, mm -hmm. a standard, um, use of the leaks, if you know what I mean. It's a bit difficult to explain, but I guess you, you understand. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like I remember in 2002, Meshuga came with an album called uh, Nothing, and they introduced the eighth string into metal. And, uh, you know, for me it was pretty obvious that the next step was supposed to be like, switch from the seven to the eight. I, I'm still playing the seven, that's why there are uh, some uh, seven strings here. So I'm playing actually six string, seven string, and eight string because sometimes it's useless for me to use an eight string if I have to play in a funky project or a rock and roll or whatever. It's just a, a pain in the neck to have those strings here, which are making a lot of noise all the time. But for composing my music, yes, I it's it, 
you know, it helps to have at least one or two strings extra to play also bass, I mean, to play some bass lines together with, uh, with the guitar. And still be able to bam down here, you know. Um, yeah, so that it was uh, just uh, in order to combine the main, the, the influences that I have as a musician. Yes? Um, how old were you whenever you started playing music? I actually started playing the guitar when I was seven, but I quit because um, it was too difficult for me. And then I started again when I was 12. And then I never stopped. You know, I just, uh, I, I thought it was really a lot of fun to play the guitar, so I just sit down and play for hours. Uh, but when I started, when I was seven, it was really difficult because I believed that, and I still see that a lot of kids, they struggle sometimes because the, I believe the guitar is a bit uh, a physical instrument. So I think that, uh, you know, six or seven years old, instead of starting playing the guitar, it would be better to start with a uh, ukulele, which is, uh, everybody knows what it is, right? The smaller instrument, which is a, a different instrument compared to the guitar, but you can still tune it like a guitar and start to get familiar with, uh, with playing notes, and melodies, scales, and stuff like that. Good suggestion. Hmm? So that's a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I teach in a couple of schools, and in free schools, and one of those has kids from uh, six years old up to 16. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm getting more experience into teaching to those kids when they are really Small and I can and I from next year I want to introduce the um, the you know the ukulele as uh, you know as instrument because I believe that it would be easier. They need to build up a little bit. We can think they are able to play an instrument like the guitar at once. Right. Some 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 of them they manage to do that. Some others they struggle a lot. And when you are so small and you struggle. It's really easy that you think like it's too difficult. I'm gonna quit, like I actually did, mm -hmm. you know. And then I started playing again because I really loved music, and you know, so nobody could stop me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Other questions? Uh, so when you got back into it, uh, what really got you going? Did you st did you join a band or anything like that? Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, it was uh, this is a really good question. My main uh, uh, goal. And it was not at that time. It was not exactly to play the guitar. It was, it was to play in a band. Mm -hmm. and I got really kind of into uh, rock music. I started to listen to bands like uh, at that time Queen, Metallica, Iron Maiden, and I really wanted to to write music, perform music, and be on stage. You know, yeah. so I, I was really really inspired. I got inspired by the the famous movie Back to the Future. When I, saw, yeah, when I saw Michael J. <laughs> Fox on stage playing Johnny Bigood, I was like, I have to be that guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I had all the tools at home because my father uh, plays the guitar. He's a musician, as hobby. And I just took the guitar and I went to my father and said, with uh, some tabs of uh, Queen, and I said, next week I need to be able to play that, so you better explain to me how this, <laughs> this instrument works. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, like, does your like family is into music and like playing instruments? And... Yeah, my father, uh, he is a musician, so he sings and uh, play the guitar and write music actually. But uh, it, it, all my family has been really into art and uh, music and stuff. So I actually I was really inspired when I was a kid because I heard a lot of blues, uh, rhythm and blues, in my house. So. Uh, I ne I've never been a blues musician, but uh, I feel that my first influence or first approach into music was uh, listening to blues. You know, still I'm not a blues guitar player, but sometimes I like to improvise a little bit. So, <clears throat> yeah. Other questions? Should I play another song? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>